Here's an idea. Magic in Dungeons and Dragons is an awful lot like radiation. Ever since the nuclear bombs set off in the 1940s and 50s, the planet we live on has a noticeably higher background radiation. Our atmosphere is tainted by radionuclides, not enough to cause any harm or any real health problems for us most of the time. And in fact, we humans naturally give off more radiation than this new normal. So really, we have nothing to fear. Radioactivity levels that small aren't ever going to hurt us. Or are they? See, it's a big problem for devices that need to measure radiation with a high degree of precision. Atmospheric air is used in the production of modern steel, which uses compressed air in a myriad of ways. Link in the link place. The radionuclides, or the particles that give off actual radiation in this air, get mixed in with the steel, meaning the steel is now radioactive. Not very radioactive, about as radioactive as the air is, but this small amount of radioactivity causes big problems. Geiger counters, which are used to make sure that background radiation is at safe levels, as well as other scientific instruments and medical devices, are all rendered completely useless if the steel inside them is, by itself, releasing radiation. When those atomic bombs were dropped, their creators never thought they might be permanently interfering with the production of medical equipment like this, but here we are. And what's more, the hunt for metals that were produced before the bombs is ongoing. Old sunken naval vessels are a big source of this low background steel, and it's a very similar situation with lead. Ancient Rome was a big creator of these kind of metals, as were ancient civilizations in what we now call China. So many scientists have need for these culturally valuable materials. Historians and archaeologists, those who dedicate their lives to protecting the past, find themselves at odds with the people tasked with forging the future. At Building Better Dungeons, we extol the virtues of finding inspiration for your game anywhere and everywhere. We've used the philosophy of Magic the Gathering, nuggets from films and books, even details about our hometowns, and we've talked about how you can use each of them. But obviously, the most wildly original work we have access to as Dungeon Masters is the ridiculous world around us. When we heard the story, our brains went spinning. So, a simple observation. Magic in Dungeons & Dragons seems to leave some kind of trace behind. Spells like Detect Magic can sense the presence of magic, and that trace is apparently characteristic enough that it can tell you the school of magic in question. Crucially for our purposes, this trace is blocked by materials like wood, and even more strongly by materials like lead. Now that's interesting, right? It seems to be deliberately evoking radiation. For those who don't know, there are a bunch of different types of radiation that you're likely to be learning about in high school or your regional equivalent. The particulars aren't particularly relevant, but alpha radiation, for example, has low penetrating power. It isn't particularly likely to make its way to you across an empty room. However, gamma radiation, what we usually think of when we hear the word radiation, has a high penetrating power, and that's why it's so dangerous. In your high school classes, you're likely to learn that the material we often use to stop gamma rays in their tracks is lead. So this analogy seems almost deliberate now, and even if it's not, we're the DM, it's our world, and we'll do what we like. So we'll say that magic is a little bit like radioactivity. Any spell leaves behind a trace. Is this magical radiation likely to be a danger to humans and other races? Well, wizards and the like don't seem to be dying of cancer at a higher rate than the other classes. What I find interesting is the wish spell. Notice the wording that can come about from using the spell to its true limits. You'll take necrotic damage, and you'll lose a lot of your strength. The damage type in D&D that seems most comparable to cell death caused by radiation does seem to be necrotic damage. So I'd say that sometimes, wizards wielding too much magic at once can overexpose themselves to this magical radiation, which seems to have very similar effects on people as our regular radiation does. So, with the analogy firmly justified, let's see what happens to our world if this is how magic works. If magical casting leaves magical radiation in proportion to the power of the spell, that means that sufficiently sensitive instruments could, perhaps, be able to tell if a spell was cast in an area in the past by noticing higher than average background magical radiation. That's an instrument whose utility would be obvious. Being able to tell if a crime was committed under enchantment magic would be very important for the justice system, and being able to tell if a disease is magical in nature could be vital to clerics and healers. A sufficiently sensitive tool might even be able to tell you if you're being watched by divination magic. Remember, too, that the tech magic works on religious and arcane magic just the same. So this instrument could be used to tell mundane matters apart from miracles, and depending on your interpretation of things like vampirism, lycanthropy, and the like, the device could be used to differentiate such monsters hiding amongst humanoids from their mundane counterparts. Not to mention that those studying the nature of magic itself and creating intricate new arcane devices would benefit greatly from having such a tool. However, of course, there might be a problem. When a sorcerer or wizard casts the spell, where does their magical radiation go? 
Eventually, it'll probably slip into the universe beyond, probably. But even just people naturally casting even low-level magic might be enough to raise the background radiation. And when you count things like teleportation circles or portals to other planes, truly high-level magic like wishes or meteor storms, and even powerful natural magical forces like ley lines, it's not difficult to imagine a world where the atmosphere is positively teeming with magic radiation. And if that's true, when the smiths blast their metal with air, as they need to do to make it, they'll contaminate it. Not enough to matter for most purposes, but enough to render it useless in the creation of any sensitive implements. So that poses a massive problem for anyone who might benefit from those tools. But there's a simple solution, and it's one that we found in our real world. Find pre-modern societies and steal their steel. So if you decide that the background radiation is a natural phenomenon, most civilizations are going to have their steel tainted anyway. Unless perhaps they are a subterranean race, or someone who lives in the Underdark. And this steel could be worth quite a lot, maybe even more than its weight in gold. And wizards and sorcerers and warlocks, those who run the academies and universities, are going to find such steel vital in their inquiries. And any government who's relying on these tools are likely going to be willing to spend a lot of money too. But who would venture down into the decrepit depths of darkness just for a paycheck? Well, adventurers, of course. Who that calls themselves a hero could turn away from the opportunity? Exploring the bowels of the earth, fighting Drow and Duragar, and civilizations far fouler and more mysterious still, and getting to keep every scrap of treasure for yourself, because all the university that's funding your expedition wants is steel? Worthless steel, useless to anyone who already has themselves kitted out. Of course, in our world, the protectors of the past, they write sternly worded letters and they play politics, they're historians, but when your players venture into ancient tombs for secret, sacred steel, the protectors of the past might be a little bit more insistent in their protestations. Also, a uh, fun aside, water is a great absorber of mundane radiation, so why not magical radiation as well? Perhaps underwater societies, like the Triton or the Marrow, find it easier to create these sensitive magical tools. And it might even help them make powerful economic empires on the back of their easy access to low background steel, creating powerful tools of science, medicine, and magic, propelling them to greater and greater heights. That is, if they can figure out how to solve the small problem of preventing the steel from rusting. We hope you found this video on magical radiation and low background steel helpful for your world building. If you'd like to chat with us proper and the bustling little community that we're kicking up, you can join the Discord. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. Just like these wonderful patrons, which includes the wonderful Talaris. Or you could just share the video with your friends if you think they'd enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and safe home.